And welcome back, everybody. In this video, we're going to discuss the use of the config viewer button in the configuration utility screen set. In the first video, the last one, we installed the software, installed LibreOffice, and registered the database. If you haven't done that step yet, I would highly recommend that you do, as this just isn't going to work for you if you haven't done that already. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our link on the da desktop for the dashboard. And we're going to open that. We go to the Configuration Viewer button and click on that. And eventually it opens up. There we go. And we're presented with basically the status of what's configured for the ROM that's selected in the select table box. Right now it's defaulting to just the demonstration values that I installed into it. And basically this is just a list of your outputs. You get to over here and this to here is basically your main board. So you start with the flasher and the strobes and the start button, etc. And it's just to give you a quick overview or indicator of where you sit with the ROM settings as you have configured them or as they come predefined. So an example would be to come down and pull up the attack from Mars table. You click the refresh retrieve button in order to make the change to, to view the values. And you can see there's quite a bit that isn't defined in it. Uh, some of that is probably because of the fact that those buttons just don't exist in the actual original table. Does not mean you can't use them. It just means right now they're not configured. And what is configured is pretty clearly laid out. Now, when you get into serial addressable strings, for especially for lighting, you'll find that the, the string can be incredibly long. So something that's helpful would be to say control A on a value like we will for the undercab lighting here, which selects everything in that box. We copy it. And if we open Notepad, we can paste it in there. And we get a better view of what is actually going on in that horrendously long string. Now, it's easier, even easier, to find separation points, such as the backslash. And just break it down into the individual components. This is more for troubleshooting or for making changes, like say you wanted to make the change of a color at a certain point or whatever. So all I'm doing right now is breaking it down at the different switch entries. The reason I want to do this is I want to explain to you a little bit about how DOF actually interprets this massive string of information. So we'll stop at that. It continues for quite a bit. These strings can become very long very quickly. But basically, when we look at one of these strings, everything in your INI file on a ROM to ROM basis is separated by commas. Each comma separation is an output. So right now all we are looking at is what the information that exists between the last comma in the INI file of the output before this and the comma at the end of this string, which then would take us to the next entry in the INI file. And I'll show an example of the INI file. 
if we look at the actual INI file, if we come down to the attack from Mars one, which would be here, the actual complete string for attack from Mars is that block right there. And that would be your entire configuration for that one ROM. And you can see how confusing that would be to have to parse through it if you were doing it manually. You would have to, once again, come comma to comma, hunt through this mess, find the commas, and then break it down based on where you come across commas. And you can see how tiring that would be. And if you miss one comma when you're looking through this string, you would find yourself counting incorrectly as to which output is which. But the upshot of it is each one of these comma separations moves you to the next output in the configuration. So when we break down the one output that we're looking at here, which happens to be the under cab lighting output for attack from Mars, we see that there are breaks from switch to switch that use the backslash. If you have a backslash, that means that you want to, if any time this trigger here, which is L13, in which case it indicates that it's a lamp or a light, any time that switch is turned on during your table gameplay, it will run this effect. Because there's a backslash at the end of it, if S15 or solenoid 15 is triggered, it will run this effect, and so on down the list. A backslash basically is a break from trigger to trigger with a totally separate effect that occurs when that trigger is fired. If, for argument's sake, you wanted S15 to run the same effect as L13, then you would use the trigger number, S15, and you would put the pipes, which is just shift backslash or shift forward slash key, which is just above your enter key on your keyboard. If you have a line like this, then that is saying if S15 or L13 are triggered then run this effect here. S15 on the line below it indicates that only if S15 is at that point would you run this effect. It's kind of a bit of important information to know only for the sake of when you get into doing your configurations and editing your configurations. It's a way of doubling up your effects and doubling up your, your triggers and getting multiple events to occur off of similar triggers. So we'll close that down. As I say, this is basically just an overview screen. You can make changes within it if you want. I wouldn't recommend it as the config editor screen is, goes much deeper and reduces an awful lot of typing. But basically all this is is a quick view in order to see what you have configured on a table to table per basis. You know, if you come down here to say America's Most Haunted and you refresh the screen, you're presented with the information that shows you exactly what has been configured. And right here is a good example. For the gear motor, you'll see that it is 
E112 with a set of pipes, which is that shift forward slash key, and E180, which indicates that if E112 or E180 are triggered, then you're going to run the gear motor. Below it, you see there's no minimum time that the gear motor runs, but it does only run for a maximum of 200 milliseconds. One millisecond basically being one one thousandth of a second. So you're talking that it's only going to run 0.2 of a second or just under a quarter of a second. In the beacons below, you see all you have is E131. That means that the only time the beacons are going to run is if E131 is triggered. It's going to run for a minimum of one second because it's 1,000. And it's going to run for a maximum of 10,000 or 10 seconds. That's just it. That's that's basically what this screen is for, is just for you to be able to get a quick overview of where your settings are. After this one, we will be taking a look at the actual config editor. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it, as always.